Hi, welcome to another Lorenzo's Music Podcast. On the show today, I am talking with an artist who is in Paris, France. It's an artist that I actually met through email and through the Creative Commons community. This artist, they create electronic music and a lot of it. And they were running through the same sort of pro, uh, problem that we were having with releasing our music under Creative Commons, which was people were taking the music that we were allowing people to build upon, remix, reuse, and claiming it for their own, and then trying to take down the people that were actually using our music in things and saying that they own the rights to it, that they had to be paid for it. And it's difficult to actually fight against that as just an independent musician. You don't know who to contact. It takes a lot of time to just find how to get a hold of someone who will listen to you in the first place to talk about it. So, but the whole conversation's not about that. That's just how we met. This person creates so much music. It's been used in video games, podcasts, radio shows, and they just released music of their own on a net label of their own music they created. A net label they created because the person releases under several different names several different, depending on the style of music they want to do. And it's a great conversation. I've always wanted to actually just speak with the person, not just over email. So we took this opportunity to actually have a conversation about making music, being independent musicians, and a little bit about some of the great sites that we used to use and still kind of use. But in their heyday, Jamendo and Free Music Archive were the place to go for independent music. And they still are, but they're different. So we talk about that on the show. And uh, here is the interview starting right now. I'm Rose. I'm composing music uh, for like, I guess, 13 years for uh, my own pleasure, for video games, um, podcasts, and movies. And I'm uh, releasing everything under Creative Commons Zero License, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly on the Free Music Archive and on Bandcamp. And for um, people listening, where are you located right now? I'm located in Paris, France. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. Pardon my French. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. You've been waiting to use that one, haven't you? <laughs> oh, I use it every time I have to speak in English, you know. That's, oh, I wish I had that joke locked and ready to go. Oh, you're so yeah, lucky. Yeah, sorry. So bad, this. <laughs> so how did you get started as a musician? Uh, you said you've been doing it for like 13 years. I mean, did you just one day go you know what, I'm going to start releasing music online or like, how, how did this all oh. begin? Um, actually, I was like playing music uh, in the end of my high school years. And um, after that, I was like not doing any studies. I was just playing music with friends. And um, at some point I was like unemployed and unable to find, to, to work everywhere because like I was like, deep in i think form of depression and um, yeah uh, i was just playing music every day every day every day and mostly guitar and at some point i like get some record stuff like uh, a sound card and just try to record something it was like the first album and at some point i find a website called jamendo mm -hmm. uh, where i like um uh, find a little French community, uh, French speaking community. And it was like really nice to, to hang around. So I was like, okay, I will upload my music in this website. And maybe some people will find, uh, find it and like it. And, uh, there is like, uh, not a lot of traffic, but yeah, it was nice to have like feedbacks from other composer, but, um, I think like few months ago um the website collapsed like weirdly the, the all the forum were deleted and so all the community went back in facebook and uh on jamendo yeah yeah on jamendo in, I, I think it was like on uh 2010 maybe 
Oh, okay. And, uh, All right. I thought you were saying yeah. just recently, and I'm like, it, it, no, it, it, no, no, okay. no, 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 <laughs> no, no. It was on 2010, and it was like. Yeah, all the forum like shut down at some point. Yeah, uh, all the, the discussion boards and um, yeah, we the French community we went back on Facebook, and uh, yeah, it was like uh, how can we do? Where can we go? Because like we had like another website called Dogmatic, which is like mm -hmm. a French um, website hosting free music and. Uh, and it and was who's not, been doing uh, it for a very long time? Like I'm yes. always amazed how long that uh, I yes. forget the person's name. I've actually spoken with the person. Um, uh, Isaac, maybe? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. and um, yeah, it was like uh, shut down for like a long time. Um, and when like all the discussion board in Jamendo uh, shut down, uh, it wasn't up. So uh, we were like uh, navigating, uh, we don't know where. So I found Bandcamp and I... Uh, put my music there and I asked for um, Free Music Archive to upload my music mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't receive like uh, an answer so my music wasn't up in uh, in the website so I was like okay creating music creating music on Bandcamp and at some point uh, I did like um, an album uh, for some friends on a website we like to write on. And uh, I, it was like the first album I put in public domain license. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was nice. I wanted like everyone to be able to use it uh, how they want it. And uh, at that moment, I was uh, accepted on Free Music Archive. And uh, it was Cheyenne. Uh, oh, Cheyenne, Cheyenne yeah. Doing, Cheyenne like, Holman. Yeah, yeah uh, doing like the admin of the website and she asked me like what license I wanted to put on all the music I wanted the, uh, I had and it was like okay public domain and uh, it was like a, a nice thing to do because like with public domain license you appear every time when you are like searching for music because like this is like the freest license so mm -hmm. um, you can put like everything you want as um in the, in the search engine and it will always appear. So it was like a way for me to like, just give my music freely because I like the idea of that, but also it was doing my own communication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. what type of music were you doing when you first started out? Was it still along the lines of what you produce now? Uh, I think, yeah. I, and, yeah or not yes um, <laughs> yeah no yeah <laughs> yeah uh, no because like i was really into rock music uh, okay. with like really guitar driven music uh, and i was like doing a lot of uh, guitar solo also because i didn't wanted to use my voice i didn't as like other instruments and i wasn't playing like saxophone as i'm doing right now hmm. and um but like, yeah, um, it was like mostly guitar driven music, but still experimenting some stuff. Like the first album is like a mix of post rock, folk, funk, mm -hmm. experimental, drone uh, and uh, progressive rock. So it just a mess of everything. There is like a bit of rap, a cringy one. Okay. And uh, yeah, it, it was like, yeah, I think it was like something I still do, but uh, now uh, I am at some point I wanted to not play guitar. Like I played less guitar for like three years to avoid doing guitar solo because I felt like it was like an easy way to uh, just uh, fill up some gap in my music and it was not really good. So I wanted to just do more feedback loops with my guitar and less uh, guitar solo. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Yeah. And so, God, there's so many things I want to ask about. The, the funny thing is, is you've, you got to experience the great history of what the Creative Commons community was back then. Like, so Jumendo, when you were uploading there, you were uploading it because it was a music site located around where you are. It was a way for you know, independent artists to upload their stuff. But at the same time, it was people uploading it under Creative Commons license and things like that. So people could use it because of Gamma laws. And we were uploading there too. And it was great. I loved it. And then that 
thing that you're talking about is because I spoke with, and again, it was so long ago, I'm going to forget the person's name, but the person I spoke to was one of the heads at Gemendo. And during that time, the company was being sold to someone else, to another company. And then it became, they, they leaned more towards the, um, the radio distribution, which is like, you know, people could just rent out the library to play inside of like, like we were getting notifications yeah. that we were being played at like a subway sandwich shop in, you know, yeah. Denmark, <laughs> or something yeah. like that. which was cool. But then the problem was, is after that, they got really finicky with what they accepted. And then, yeah, their communication was gone. And before it was like you could communicate with people and they'd be like, this is great. Now they have a new forum and it's not as good. It's harder to find music on there. There's even when you search for music, it just puts its own library up first of like it's it's yeah. sort of stock music. I've I've seriously been trying to go there the past few months to just try and find oh. different artists in other countries. And all I'm getting is all this background music, music. Yeah, it, <laughs> actually, like, it, it's really weird, but um, Jamendo, like, um, just after the 2010 years, mm -hmm. got really into a capitalist way of gathering music, presenting music on their website. Which is ironic <laughs> from what yes, they started yes. out to do. <laughs> yes. And that, that's really stupid. Like in um, the French community, I don't know how it was like in the English speaking community, but in the French community, we were like really, really against this way of doing. We were like a lot of communists in the, <laughs> in the mm -hmm. discussion boards. And we wanted like the website to still be like it was like it yeah. it was more um album website not towards singles and uh, at some point jamendo like wanted to promote singles and uh, just songs and not like a whole album so mm. to maybe... I mean that's kind of the way the music industry went all together yeah. you know yeah for sure yeah and yeah and mostly in like the stock music it was like I think they wanted to go like Shutterstock music or Pond5, which are more mm -hmm. like really focused in single tracks mm -hmm. with like uh, a lot of tags to set the mood and stuff and so on. Well, not uh, even because you used to be able to put tons of tags when you uploaded music yeah. and now you can only put up like three and they tell you what choices you can use. You know, yeah. and that's kind of frustrating as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think like Jamendo went like in this capitalist way and it become like a generic website with stock music, but like with um, a little bit of licensing mm -hmm. and okay-ish. I think we were not like a lot using the licensing uh, stuff in, um, in the French community. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a part of it. I, I felt like it was not really nice and... I, I didn't want my music to be played in the in subway in Denmark, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, I don't I don't want a brand or so, I I mean they do whatever they want, but yeah. I'm not like doing it actively. Like right. this is not my way of like uh, using my music. Uh, I I don't want to to capitalize on this part of this aspect of the use of my music, and um, yeah, I, I was like not really in front of this way of using free music licensing mm -hmm. yeah i don't know uh yeah so um after that uh, i went sometime on jamendo to try to listen to new stuff not to upload it it was just like to be by, by like curiosity and yeah mm -hmm. i found out like the website to be really really hard to use and, um, yeah, and it doesn't load really, half the time, or yeah. it gets stuck, yes. or yeah, it's it's yes. it looks nice, I suppose, but <laughs> yes, yes, not my vibe, but right. you know, <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely more corporate. -y. And then after that, oh, so you were talking about the Free Music Archive, which we lucked out because I found our music was uploaded there by someone else, by uh, the Block Sonic Net label, and I had no idea what free music archive was and i just was getting traffic from it on our website and i'm like what's this mm -hmm. and someone had uploaded it and i was like oh that's really cool you used it and i was like 
can we upload more here? How's this work? And at that time, Free Music Archive, it was a curator run community run by a radio yeah. station in uh, WFMU New in New Jersey. Yeah. So that was the real cool thing about that site. But also the really difficult thing about that site is the music was kind of curated by real music nerds, you know, like people that yes. liked all kinds, which made it better. But if you wanted to upload stuff, it was you couldn't just do it. You couldn't just upload yep. whatever you wanted, which uh, Cheyenne was actually the last curator or uh, head of the Free Music Archive before they sold it off. But but yeah, so we lucked out because Mike from Block Sonic was like, oh, I can give you access so you can upload the rest of your stuff. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. so I was able to upload whatever I wanted right away when I found Yeah. <laughs> so that was cool. But uh, yeah. but yeah, it, when they sold it off and it almost died and it was brought back to like by Tribe of Noise, but it's definitely mm -hmm. the same model as as uh, Gemendo for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's but you can you, but more bands still upload on it. I, I do find more bands on it. But yeah, it's again going to they've got the corporate rock. Uh, you can buy licensing type thing. Still yeah, going on. yeah, yeah. But like Free Music Archive is still, um, I think, I still is still the best website for listening to music. Yeah, because it's still got all the old music. stuff that was there. Like it didn't get rid yes. of anything. Yeah. Yes, they didn't get rid of anything, but also they have the best search engine. And mm -hmm. um, they do. It, it, it was better uh, when it was like before, uh, uh, before not Tribe of Noise, but the. Um, yeah, the uh, WFMU. Oh, no, no, no. What was that brand of like a photograph like uh, who bought Free Music Archive before? Um, oh, uh, before Tribe of Noise. Oh, Nip that's right. The uh, company that was just buying it for the domain name. Yeah. Um, they weren't gonna. They weren't gonna continue on. They just wanted the the search engine domain. Yes, it, it was, was. It was some it was. film. They were doing it for what was it for? Like they, specifically for film for independent film. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. What uh, was the name of that? That's a good question. Kid Split. Kid Split. Ah, yeah, there you go. Kid Split. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they learned they right like... away from the amount of hate mail that they got and the fact that yeah. it was just going to cost too much. Like the, it was an impulse buy <laughs> is what it turned yeah, out to I be. Yeah, I think that so it, it was like... Uh, I'm I'm a bit um, I'm a bit sad because like I found Free Music Archive and had access to it like for the last two years of Free Music Archive mm -hmm. and I was like finding uh, at some point a place where there was like people like you me and uh, Cheyenne and uh, Lisberg and other like creative people uh, coming together on like doing this kind of uh, music challenges with like CC Mixer and. Uh, other album community mm -hmm. album like uh, doing like this weird recipe album to cook music uh, to cook stuff with the music it was like so fun to do yeah and I, I found like a real gathering of people like um with the same uh philosophy uh trying to do the same kind of stuff um me, I was like in a big, massive um, productivity uh, period. I was like, I think during the first year, year I was in Free Music Archive, I uploaded like 60 albums. I was like really, really into product Good Lord. productivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a massive year for me. And uh, I was unemployed and I had like just the time to do this. And that was like... Uh, something to to galvanize yourself. You, you, you were, I, I, it was the first time I was bro broadcasted on re, uh, actual radio, like mm -hmm. on the WFMU in the Lisberg uh, show. It was really fun, like to find this show every week and listen to it mm -hmm. and find new music on the Free Music Archive. There was like actual uh, curation um, and people like looking deep dive. Uh, in Free Music Archive and finding out like there is like so many good music, like yeah. really inspiring experimental music, but like wacky music. And it was so good to find something like this. And so, yeah, um, Free Music Archive was for me like the best place. And I found out like to how to use the... Um, there was like some stuff that wasn't really good, like the charts were like broken. It was always the same music. 
mm-hmm. uh, putting like like the, the top 10 of Free Music Archives was always the same. It was like right. always like uh, Broke Owl or stuff like this. Like, I don't know. Broke yes, Owl, or Broke there Owl. was a uh, Soldier Boy cover or something like that that was up there for, I swear, six months. But <laughs> right before, here's, but I got lucky in this too. Uh, right before they sold and got rid of the site, uh, one of the last songs that we posted up on the old version of the site was in that top 10. That got oh, nice. us tons of plays. <laughs> yes. yes, that's good. Yeah, the the other thing, and here's actually, two. this is like a two-part question. The other thing was that um, Free Music Archive had the best music genre search. Like you would just search for rock, and then it would go, okay, here's rock, but here's like 20 different tags of subcategories. Love that. That was fantastic. Now, one... You mentioned a bunch of genres of music that you put out. You said you've had like 60 albums. Now, here's something that I've been struggling with. And I feel like people that make more independent music have more choices of what genre they can say. But when you're like a four piece rock band like us, but you do weird rock music, we have like indie alternative uh, the end. You know, like I'm trying to find like a good way to like there's no good subgenre for what I do. So how do you go about finding these subgenres of what you do or the different names you get to choose from? I just feel like a lot more independent musicians or or solo musicians have so many genres to choose from. So what do you yeah, yeah. what do you call yours? Uh, it depends on the projects. Every like nicknames I use are like for a new way of creating music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like just to to bounce on the Free Music Archive website, uh, it was like a good search engine, but not a good. Uh, I um. A, it was not good to um, auto determinate yourself that self determinate yourself like mm-hmm. y- you were you are like stuck in like alternative rock indie mm-hmm. rock for your band yeah but like in band camp actually you can use all the tag you want and you can yes. self determinate your own music yeah. and try to fit in new stuff like you can create your own tag you can create like uh, or join another tag and kind of mix with everything and i found it like super useful and super cool like to study how music is uh, shaped uh, okay. by self-determination. Uh, I think this is like super cool. And Bandcamp has this, and this is so great. But um, for me, um, I, it will depend on the, yeah, on the ID and the, the nickname. Actually, mm-hmm. I find a new nickname uh, when I have like a new concept of music genre, like I had like dance floor is lava, when I wanted to create like disco noise music, yeah, I had like anonymous four twenty when I wanted to remix corporate music and um, also capitalist and utilitarian music. You can find on Pond Five or Shutterstock music, mm-hmm. um, and uh, like remix it so you can like listen to it uh, as a music and not as an utilitarian music like you won't remix it for like a video corporate video some stuff like that right um i think like soft and furious is like more synth music but also vaporwave but also i don't know like it's like fluid like my gender <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, yeah now actually i'm doing like bumping car music <laughs> doing <laughs> what for one <laughs> what, what? you know like you, you know like this like attraction in like um oh. y- you have like you have cars bumping okay so each other. you did say what yeah. i thought you're saying bumper car yeah. okay yeah bumper car yeah okay it's how like is the music how, I'm doing. how is that what is bumper car music i don't know how to ask this question <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like euro beats but hyper like really hyper okay <laughs> Yeah, and like with a lot of noise and uh, like with like feedback guitar and just <laughs> and like you are on a massive sugar rush and okay. this is what you are like actually experiencing. <laughs> All right. That definitely is making up your own genre or did it already exist? Yeah. 
I don't know. I, okay. I, uh, I heard you Hobbit already exists, but bumper car music, I'm not quite sure. Actually, I will check that. <laughs> All right. Well, while you're checking that, here's another thing I want to ask you. So what is the process when you're making a song? I know that you, and you've already touched on this, you've got several different names, which makes it brilliant that you released everything under loyalty freak music so that even though it's you, you can switch projects, but it's, it makes sense that you can still find it under the same thing. Whereas if you would have chosen a name and going, Oh, now I've chosen another name. So then you got to create another website and a separate thing. At least you did like more of the music label sort of format, which was very smart. I think that's great because when you first contacted me, I really did think that you were like putting up music for several people. (laughs) And then I read more and I was like, Oh, that's you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But what, what is your process when you start making a song? Like how do you go about recording and writing it and stuff like, uh, most of the time it's because like, I'm really bored or, uh, it, yeah. (laughs) Um, and mostly it's like, I'm thinking about something in like, um, uh, when I'm traveling, uh, but like traveling, like to go to my day job or, uh, going like to see a friend somewhere in Paris Yeah. and I don't have music and I'm just like, pum, 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 pum. Okay. so yeah, like I'm recording something or just like, if I'm going back at home, I'm trying to think about it and I just launch a computer and try to do something with like MIDI files. Yeah. Uh, oh, so you do work also... in MIDI files a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, okay. Yeah. But I'm not using like a keyboard. I'm just like clicking. <laughs> oh, you're actually doing the writing of the MIDI on the track. What, what, uh, yeah, yeah, with, what ma- software? with, with mouse. Yes. 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 What, what software with, with are you using? Reaper, uh, Coco Reaper. I don't know that one. Reaper? You don't oh, know Reaper. Reaper. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I didn't hear it correctly. Okay. That's my fault. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, do- I'm using Reaper like since the, might be like the beginning of what I'm composing. I'm using Reaper. Okay. And yeah. um, that's uh, okay. So, but you're putting out that much stuff and you're clicking on it and writing it all. Well, I'm saying it like it's, I mean, writing music in general is work. So I, I don't understand why I'm thinking like, oh, that's way harder. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Like, it's just like a way of doing it. Like if you are used to use a keyboard, you can yeah. do this with a keyboard. But actually, um, I'm not a pianist. I don't know how to use a keyboard. Mm. And uh, so, no, I, I'm used to use a guitar. And so I work with that. And I know I know I, I see a piano roll. I know how to use a piano roll. And just I, I work mm-hmm. with that. But okay. yeah, uh, most of I tried, I began music with improvisation. So it's easy for me like to just grab a guitar and play the guitar and uh, yeah, just like this and it's fun. And I tried like classical guitar, uh, folk guitar, electric guitar, and I'm really into experimental music and uh, game design. So um, I've like built uh, board games and card games to create um, soundscapes and uh, sound spaces and uh, for yourself or with other people yeah. and uh, with like rules and stuff. So um, yeah, um, like I, I don't have like uh, blank pages with music because like most of the time when I like just, I don't have IDs, um, I, I think like putting all your music in public domain and doing like massively uh, you have like feedbacks from people telling you, oh, I've used this music, this music, this music. Mm-hmm. And personally, deeply inside you, you, you think that those music are really bad and like, it's just like shit. But <laughs> you know, you know, this is not the truth. The truth is not yours. Like people are using your music and enjoying yeah. it. So maybe, maybe you are wrong for yourself. So I'm like, okay, maybe this is like a shitty idea what I'm doing. But actually, I'm going to embrace it because even though I don't like it, maybe someone will like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) And also the thing that people do as well is when your uh, music gets used in a game and uh, we, this has happened to us with ones I didn't know it was being used, but people will come to, they'll go search for it on YouTube and they'll just type in like, I heard this in Nanix or, you know, stuff like that. 
and, and when that first started happening, I'm like, what the hell are these people saying? Because <laughs> it didn't make sense. I, I heard this in Nanix and I'm like, is that a is that a city? <laughs> what is the Nanix? <laughs> yeah. And it turns out it's some Russian mobile gaming company that um, yeah. has been using our stuff in like tons of their different games. I downloaded one and uh, I recorded a video of me go it's like it was like a uh, Grand Theft Auto sort of ish game. It was called Miami Crime Simulator. So <laughs> I have a video of me going through it like stealing cars trying to find the radio that's playing our song <laughs> it took yeah. me like 20 minutes <laughs> yeah uh, but it was cool nice. you know I, yeah. that was enjoyable um it, and yeah. also with the stuff that you've been releasing along those lines i heard a podcast you were on because there's a cbc radio show that or podcast that uses your music and you did an interview okay. on there oh uh was it like ephemeral radio I think so. All I know yeah, is that yeah, it yeah. was like a Canadian radio thing. I can't, re I can't remember off the top of my head. I just remember listening and it was, I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I was like, that's actually, that's actually what made me reach out to you again. I was like, wait, <laughs> that's that person that I talked to in an email that one time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that was really neat. Tell me about that getting used down there. Like, is that just something you found out about? Did they contact you? Like, how did it get used for that project? Uh, uh, on Ephemeral, you yeah. uh, you want you want? Um, I, I think like um, Alexander uh, was like um, doing this podcast, and he was like using a lot of music uh, I've done, and. Um, at some point, he was like, okay, um, that person like produced a lot uh, with like a lot of aliases. It seems like nice. And uh, yeah, uh, he just reached out and like we are like hanging like this, uh, all we are doing right now. And yeah. I was like, okay, I want to do a podcast on what you do. And he was like, okay, f yeah, go for it. It's nice. I love to talk about myself. I'm really egocentric. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a subject you yeah. know a lot about. <laughs> yeah actually <laughs> oh and uh, so what games do you also make i mean you're making music specifically for games or it just gets used in games like what's uh, how, how do you get both. your music in games both okay yeah uh, actually most of the time it was like by free music archive uh, okay. I know that because I don't have like a lot of album uh, I have a lot of album on free music archive but I don't have the the totality on it and um there is like a choice uh, with that and um I, I actually i contacted you about this problem mm -hmm. and it was like um identity usurpation and people like stealing music and using content id over the music and it's mostly on free music archive this is the website w w which is targeted by those those uh, usage of yeah. the music but so um, at first it was like people using my music uh, on the free music archive on video games and sometimes I receive like a notification or I see people like like you like oh yeah I've listened to this music in that web uh, in that uh, video game yeah so, that's so nice I was like oh does this exist uh, okay nice mm -hmm. so at some point, um, some people using my music were like, okay, I can hire you maybe because like, I like what you do and I have like a bit of money. So uh, do you mind, uh, do you want to create the soundtrack of my game? And uh, actually, oh, so they did actually reach out to you to do more. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Actually, the, the biggest opportunity I had was with Nikki Casey um okay. for a game called adventure with anxiety which is like a game uh created and uh put in creative Commons zero the code is uh, cc0 oh the game domain. itself is yes oh so they wanted some people doing cc0 music actually for this like so they contacted me because they use um cc0 music from uh my first album from komiku Mm -hmm. So uh, they wanted me to do uh, the soundtrack of their new game, and it was like a popular one. So I had like uh, a lot of people reaching out, and it was really nice. Uh, also, it was like a free game, so uh, Nikki Casey paid me for it. But 
there is like no money coming from this. So yeah, just people coming and using the music. And actually the music uh, from the video game mm -hmm. was used in a lot of video games also because it's oh. CC0. Yeah, because okay. like people like the, the work of Nikki Casey. So they wanted um, to remix it or, uh, or they just wanted to use the music and because it was fun. Yeah. But like, actually, there, uh, there is like a lot of video game, video game using my music. And I'm really, really happy about this. I really like to play video games. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> See, I only yeah. kind of do. I, I, there was a time uh, oh, quite a while back. Actually, I could tell you how when it was. Uh, when Paper Mario came out. Okay. I was, yeah, I was like three quarters of the way through the game. Uh, <laughs> my son played the game did because they didn't want to start from the beginning and they played my saved version. They messed everything up. I didn't know where I was. And I'm like, I'm not going to start this over again. And then that's <laughs> the last time I played. It was just like, this is too much work now. <laughs> oh, I love I it. Up. This is like yeah, your, your kid, like grabbing your book. <laughs> <laughs> reading the next part and you can't read the part they read <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> it's funny <laughs> yeah so so i used to be heavy into it but that was just like oh i really got to start over again and then that's when i realized like i could do other things um not that it's yeah. bad i mean our stuff gets used in games all the time and i love it but uh yeah but here's a question too so you release under creative commons zero we release under creative commons attribution share alike Two very different things, same realm, but uh, people always ask me this, and uh, now that I have you in here, like, okay, so you said you were not working when you first started doing music and you were writing all this music, but then we also release music under Creative Commons. Getting paid, like, is it, how does that happen? People ask me that all the time. There is a way to do it. There are several ways to do it, but yes, it's yeah. very hard to comprehend. So how do you go about, like, you're getting your stuff used in these games. They use it because it's Creative Commons Zero, but the, you have money coming in from it. How does that happen? What are you doing? Uh, actually, actually, uh, I don't have a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not saying it's a lot, but I'm yeah. just saying, no, you no, know no, what? But... Every musician doesn't have a lot coming in. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And actually, no, I'm living with like an employment money and, uh, okay. um, uh, and some commissions because like, in... oh, you are it's doing not because it's free music. It's uh, free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, uh, if you want music commission for, for something, uh, it's possible. And, uh, actually, um, I do like a cheaper, uh, uh, cost if I can release the music under Creative Commons Zero after I'm doing the commission. So mm -hmm. like people like with less money can have like original music for their, uh, project. But in the end, uh, the music will be uh, Creative Commons Zero. So they mm -hmm. are So it can okay be multi-purposed. With... Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. That's and smart. I'm really, I'm pushing forward to this because I think this is the best way. I don't like copyright stuff. So yeah, yeah. I, I'd rather be like paid less and be on CC Zero because like, I don't mind I, having a day job and composing music. I don't have like, I don't mind like doing other stuff than music. I'm not like, I'm attached to music, but I'm attached to a lot of form of music and way yeah. to think about it and leaving it. So yeah, composing is one thing and mm -hmm. uh, I like it to be like the freest way possible. So yeah. Uh, Earning money is like by people downloading music on Bandcamp or playing uh, on Spotify. And so I'm like, actually like earning, I think, two, 200 euros with that by month. Hmm, and okay. it's actually like a lot. <laughs> it's a yeah, lot for a musician, money. that's not bad for just yeah. independently putting stuff online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just like having revenue with stuff you already done. It's really, really insane. It was like not the case like two years ago. It was like really not the case. Mm -hmm. And after that, there is like commission work, but like it's for um, mostly podcasts, video games, and porn movies. 
How are people and, uh, asking you to make this stuff? When you do commissions, like what specifically do they tell you or how does that process work? Like what's, I mean, people just go make us a song. <laughs> what, what, what do they do? And are, is there a lot of back and forth? Uh, it depends on the purpose okay. and uh, how they can like speak about music. Um, mostly like in podcasts, they want, uh, they want specific music, like to talk over or just like a jingle or mm. both. And so the music has like a certain purpose, um, for, uh, movies, it's, it will depend on the, uh, on the movies, but on the moment of the movies on the type of movies also, like you don't like, um, do the soundtrack of a movie, uh, classic movie or a porn movie mm -hmm. and uh it's different for video game too um yeah so actually i'm i'm just asking what they want the duration and uh the aesthetic and if they have like examples of uh, copyrighted music okay. uh, they like so i can inspire our, and i am asking also if they want like specific instruments or specific genre, and I'm really, really uh, like uh, uh, honest with what I can, I can do, and I cannot do, and also I won't do. Like mm -hmm. I won't do jazz, I won't do classical music, I won't do reggae music or uh, and, uh, derivative, because it's not my culture, and also because other people are doing like way better than me, and uh, so I'm redirecting them to towards those people. Yeah. But yeah, and after that, like if they want like harp, if they want like violin, um, I'm telling them like um, it, it will sound cheap, 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 cheap. So cheap. <laughs> because I I I pay nothing, I pay no VST. Right. <laughs> I'm yeah. using free VST. I don't crack anything. I'm yep. bad at it. So I'm just Same. using free VSTs and like. Uh, I'm really, I'm really uh, happy to have like big cat audio, but it's so cheap. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you alter the sounds at least? Do you find a sound and then just alter it through the MIDI sequencer itself, or do you just use them out of the box? You just use them as is. Like, how are you making your sounds? I'm trying like to to make it like way cheap. Why, why not cheaper, but like better, but I'm not like a good sound de in, uh, okay. designer or yeah, I'm not good at this. <laughs> okay. No, I, and I asked just because I normally use them. Like I just search through all the pre-programmed sounds that are in whatever yeah. thing I'm using. Like right now I'm using Yoshimi and you know, I'll just use what's in the sound bank. But then I recently discovered that you can actually go in and like, there's there's tons of stuff you can do to the original yeah. sound. But then I'm like, well, I'm going to spend a good half hour, 60 minutes trying to find a sound that I can manipulate. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm at that impasse where it's like, do I just keep using the regular sounds and see if I can mm. EQ it or try and manipulate them to what I want? I don't know. So I was yeah. curious what you uh, did. Yeah. I, uh... I was like into uh, this kind of consideration like for like like three years ago when I was like learning how to use MIDI and synths mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm just stuck on one I use synth one like okay. uh, yeah and I really I'm really in love with this and so I mostly to to do like electronic music I mostly use this one because I, I know how it works after like tweaking everything and experiencing like daily, you can like have like your habits and also your own banks and also the, so the sounds you really like. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's why like uh, I'm not uh, accepting uh, everything people ask me to do because yeah. like I don't like it, it would like if they want like cheap violin, I can do that. If they want realist violin, they right. won't have this. But yeah. if they want like a this is what you're going to get if you want violin is basically yes. what you're saying. <laughs> yes, but actually, like it can be an aesthetic, and I'm really into this yeah. kind of aesthetic to like really cheap stuff, like cheap saxophone and stuff. There so, is yeah, 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 yeah. There's a benefit to that. There's there's a, yes. a definite sort of feel to that what that is like it has its own sort of place um yeah it, it can exist <laughs> how are you finding these people or how are they finding you um 
Actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they found me because, like, I'm. So um, you're not I'm actively active out on... there trying to look for them. Mm. N uh, no, but actually, I'm. I'm trying to like do a lot of stuff. Okay. So I'm on social media uh, a lot, but I'm mostly in the French speaking uh, community. Yeah. So like in video games and stuff. Um, but I'm trying to do a bit of everything. Mostly, like these days, I'm doing like um, live music a lot. Oh, you are. Um, but like with like a bumper bumper car music, actually. Right. Okay. <laughs> or I'm doing like noise live music also with like feedback loop guitar and effect pedals. Um, by or yourself, or do you have accompaniment? Uh, by myself and okay. sometimes with accompaniment, like I'm trying to do some techno with noise. Uh, actually, like some some friends of mine like playing techno, and me, I'm on the guitar oh, playing noise music over this, and it's really nice. Actually, yeah, it's like you are moving your body, but also uh, piercing your ears, and this is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. this kind of feeling, and um, after that, like uh, yeah. Um, what I wanted to say. Uh, so yeah, it's a, a way for me like to to find people in this way. But also, I'm doing like game design. I'm creating like little games, but also I'm creating games to uh, create music. Mm -hmm. So like I was t telling you like board game, card game, and um, and actually uh, I'm I'm actually more into like uh, porn music composition. But like mm -hmm. queer and alt porn, uh, and I think like this is like a place like you can like find also like uh, people wanting free music. Uh, so I'm like creating music for for like uh, directors and composing like music for this uh, this field, and uh, I'm finding it like really interesting to do, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So, so like I'm reaching for people, but also people are reaching to me because like on Free Music Archives, there is actually like a lot of traffic and yeah. still a lot of traffic, even though the website is not really um, friendly. <laughs> yeah, it's got the uh, yeah. it, it's got the click gate on the front oh, where it's yeah. like, do you want to go here? Or do you want to go here? Yeah. Which also Jumendo does that, too. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Do you want to like, see the free like, music or do you want to go to the yes. licensing music? Uh, yeah, I, I like Tribe of Noise, but oh, come on. No, I know. It's, <laughs> I wish it would just go to the site and have the Tribe of Noise thing at top. I agree. It would. Yes. Yeah, I, I think Tribe of Noise does a good thing. I think they have more musicians than composers, uh, which was the thing that I pref me per I prefer. I understand people are looking specifically for music for projects and PowerPoint yeah. presentations and stuff like that. But come on, there are musicians out here just making music that are going, we want to release our stuff too. Um, yeah. I, I actually, one more thing I want to ask before we go, I noticed, and by the time this comes out, it'll already be out, but you have a release on Bandcamp right now that is actually coming out next month. And yeah. are yeah. you, releasing a, a song on that album once a week no okay because no. because there's some where it's like it's playable and then other ones they're like darked out oh uh, yeah no this is a pre-order like okay uh, it will be out like uh on so the, it's the... a pre-order i've never done a pre-order yeah. on Bandcamp, so i didn't know what that was like i thought you were just like listing no. all the songs and then slowly uploading one of them and then oh, it would no, be a no, full no. album I'm at the end. my time <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, like you can like cross, uh, like uh, it like a case. Okay. But is this a pre-order? And you can like um, select the song you want to put in the pre-order. Gotcha. So, uh, and after that, like um, it will like be uh, released like for like uh, February twenty-three. Okay. So uh, at that date, it will like be. Uh, complete and this is bumper car music actually <laughs> okay that, that is the, yeah. okay i was wondering because i was listening to that going this is different okay so that's yeah. what the bumper car music is okay i got gotcha. you yeah <laughs> all right and then so um before we go are there any other 
upcoming things or things you'd like to mention that you want to tell people about? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, at some point, maybe I will fi finally finish this like um, uh, stuff I was doing with like Creative Commons music and content ID stuff. I would love yes. to write an article about this. Because like I think I I reached out to you you did because of this uh, yeah that was how like we first met because you were going yes. through the same thing we were we release our music free and some company was like wait they're releasing this music free well then we can just take it and put it on paid services <laughs> yes let's go <laughs> and let's it was like no you everything. can't but how do we get a hold of anyone to tell them no you can't. And I, that no, was what you reached out to me for, because we did literally go through the same thing. And yeah. I said, you really can't, it's very hard. And I was like, the only thing we can do is we actually release it through a distributor so I can go, hey, this is ours. And then you can yeah. tell the distributor to go off after them, which is the opposite of releasing independently. I mean, it's still yes. releasing independently, but you know. It's yes, the option it's, we have right now that doesn't take tons of emails and a year of, because we had a company in uh, Korea that was going and doing takedowns for our music, claiming it was theirs. And then finally, mm -hmm. I just started claiming it on YouTube because you used yeah. to just be able to claim the music yourself on YouTube uh, if you had the content ID. So Yeah. Yeah. No, And you ran into the same thing, I'm assuming. <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah. So I asked like to a lot of people because I wanted to to write about this because like how how can we defend like free music? Mm -hmm. This is like I think something that will be like really hard in the next year uh, if we don't like create a community and federate ourselves. But also like we have like all those spaces like free music archive like. It was a good space uh, at some point to to like make some calls, like uh, to participate or like to defend free music. But yeah. like actually, it's really difficult uh, to to create those calls, um, to ask for people like to do surveys to like evaluate how how free music composer can like defend themselves to towards this problem. Um, there is like no lobby of public domain. This is like something I find ridiculous and really, really sad. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, like, and not just for free music. It's like for art in general and like uh, active human activities in general. And I feel this is like such such a, a bummer. Like, okay, we have archive.org. This is nice, but mm -hmm. also we need like to 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 help each other. And that's why I'm really happy. Like, we are like creating a community together but um free musician and free music composer are really like um spread and i hope one day we, we will like uh be together and like doing something together like to fight back against capitalist culture yeah. this is like so such such a problem actually <laughs> you know it and i know that creative commons like the creative commons site and comp not company i can't think of the right word but you know the creativecommons.org yeah, no, no. itself they explain a lot of what they can do they explain about how they've been trying to help in different ways but i wish i could just contact them like hey that thing that you do that we're using this person's going against it go after them like i wish it were that easy <laughs> but i yeah, know it's not actually it's not yeah. it would be nice if they also did the i guess lawyerish work yes I, you know like i wish they'd you'd be able to contact them and go go get them they're doing the thing wrong or they yeah. can even turn to us and go no that is what they can do with it or you know just be more of a like if you would contact a lawyer i hate using that as a reference but you know that's that's what it is it's a legal document yeah. that was created by a lawyer who practices that type of law uh the yeah. lawrence lessing so Anyway, yes, I agree with you. And it's, it, did you ever get it solved or is it one of those things just like it finally just stopped happening? Or? Uh, no, 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 no. At least um, it, 
it happens like regularly and yeah. I contact like distribution service like to 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 tell them like it's not possible you can't do this and you have like to delete the, the account like using and using content ID over the, this type of music because yeah. it's like in uh, in the rule of content ID you can't use content ID on creative commons uh, stuff it's right. impossible uh, because uh, these are like non-exclusive uh, licenses so you can't have the exclusivity of the use via content ID mm -hmm. so uh, yeah like regularly but I, I have to do my own um, my own researches to see if my music is claimed somewhere and sometimes I like have feedbacks from people uh, telling me like okay uh, your music is not free what the fuck is it happening uh, no right. this is free but this is capitalism dude <laughs> I know it's difficult and yeah. like you said the yeah. only way to actually traffic or to track it without having the man hours or the people to do it is to go through this, the distributor, even though that's not the way that it yeah. should be done, but that's how it can be tracked. And also through the distributor, if somebody does go, hey, I thought I could use this, you go, yeah, give me mm -hmm. one sec. You contact the distributor and go, hey, yeah. let them use this. And they go, okay, yeah, but you, it, know, you can clear, takes... but, it's, but that's also a pain. Oh but oh yeah but it's it takes like that, at least you're in control weeks. of it yeah but at least yeah. you're in control of it rather than some company that you can't get a hold of going no this is our music yeah That's, actually actually it happened you know, a lot like having like no contact uh to 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 find and you have like to at some point i had to contact someone on linkedin <laughs> because like their their company was fake Right. And it was like really weird and they had like the opportunity to activate content ID and I, because the, the company uh, didn't add like any website I can mm -hmm. contact, it was like a re really weird distribution service. So like you have like to do some stuff, it's weird. And yeah, yeah at some point there was like a, someone like uh, using uh, content ID of the music, uh, I managed to contact on Facebook and I was like, uh, what the fuck is happening, dude? What, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you like stealing uh, music from? Uh, I hope music you worded it better than that. <laughs> and yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And actually, he, he answered me. Yeah, he answered me. He told me like, but I, someone sold me that music and told yeah. me I was able to use it because it, it, someone like oh, so they sold got it from it somebody Fiverr. else. Yes. Okay. Yes, because there is like free music traffic on Fiverr. Like, mm. this is so fucked up. <laughs> that's the problem. When people just hear, like, oh, you, that's, there are tons of videos on YouTube where they're like, here's a way to make tons of money making videos yeah. on YouTube. And they go, you just put a picture and then you go to Free Music Archive and all this music is free. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, to a point. It's not yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I and there is like this really weird capitalist like licensing in in the US called PLR private label rights hmm. and okay. uh, so like they sell stuff with this license to other people and those other people can also sell this stuff but in rebranding it uh, and sell it to someone else like with the PLR license also and this is like a chaotic libertarian mess Hmm. And this is like not right at all. And they are like selling um, free music with this license. So people are like, okay, I can like um, use this music and put it on distribution service and use content ID and get the money of it. And yeah. there are like a lot of people doing that. And this is really, really an intense shit. Yeah. So yeah, and it won't stop until we crush capitalism. <laughs> well on that note <laughs> yes. i want to uh thank you very much for joining me today where should people uh, go you. to check out more of your music um you can go on loyaltyfreakmusic.com it's like my main website you can find the uh, links to the band comes there and also the link of my itch is where i put like all the games i i do mm. and also the musical games i do are on this so if you want like to print your own card of music bravo to create like experimental music with friends and have like really cringe moments but with friends uh you can like go there it's like uh rosazerti.itch.io with five r yes five 
and uh, so it's my Bandcamp is chez mon plaisir c h e z m o n p l a i s i r so it's like mon plaisir home it's not a name chez it's not chez please it's not chez my name is not chez it's rose <laughs> it's a french word <laughs> yeah well, thank you so much for talking with me uh, today. it was great to finally meet you, you. Tom. <laughs>